Hey, Saints and Aids. What up with y'all? How art thou? What's good with it? Um, how are you? I'm good. What's that mean? Like, um, I'm Gucci. Not Burberry. No, 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 I'm just playing. I'm, no, no, I'm good. I, we just had a great, great conversation, a great podcast, and, uh, yeah, and I'm sitting right here looking at your little Persian eyes and your beautiful wow. eyebrows. So you know what I want to thank and God your, for? And your makeup is like you want you know you want to know what and I your want. edges is You're like done, silky. You you know what I want to thank God for? What? Happened? So you were out of town this weekend, and I was. I was. In, yeah, you were in Minnesota. Oh yeah, I was. I told you that. And I was real, real backed up, not in the spirit, but in my body. Ooh, boo boo. And so <laughs> in there. Jammed. And I was feeling bloated and uncomfortable. I, I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't move with ease mm. and things. Neither can your intestines. Yeah. And so what I did was, is I took uh, three laxatives and castor oil over, over the over the course of twelve hours. <sighs> and I probably so, shouldn't have taken that much. Right. You was a running river. I was being. <laughs> <laughs> And in the middle of the night, my stomach just was like, it just felt like it was, they were just fighting spirits and principalities <laughs> in on my inside. So now you feel free? But listen, I prayed. I said, Lord, though, it got to come out. Because it's like, <laughs> you got to like, you got to set me free. Like you made the body. And so I know, I know you can overcome this too. And so at like six in the morning, right when I'm supposed to get up to wake the girls up, it was a mighty Russian win. Free! Yeah, the, the lord of the lord of hosts did battle oh my and goodness so i'm just so grateful to be to be free he rolled over the stone whoa yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. we talk about the most darnest yeah. things after three days he got out the darnest things after four days i got free babe what are we talking about uh spiritual warfare and temptation <laughs> had nothing to do with boo boo <laughs> that might be a demon some people probably <laughs> constipated because they need deliverance hello <laughs> you being held up <laughs> You being controlled and oppressed <laughs> by something outside yourself. I don't remember how this discussion started, but we were on the bed talking about just the, the whole dynamic and discipline and challenge and necessity of faith when it comes to fighting temptations. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And by, by temptation, we mean, you know, those internal and external forces that tempt or seduce us towards disobeying god's law yeah. and god's command that is a temptation mm -hmm. um and so i guess when you're in the world you're a slave to sin yeah so it's not even like it, i'm not gonna say it's not a temptation but it's like you gonna do it anyway it ain't like you know yeah but in christ that's when it becomes like no like this is something that is tempting me to walk away from who I love. And so I guess as a as a new believer, do you remember the first time, because I have a story, but do you remember the first time you realized, oh, this is a fight? Oh, absolutely. I think for, for me, it was the, the, the area of sexual purity. Mm -hmm. um, because I think when I became, a, well, not think, I know when I became a believer, I know a lot of the things that I felt like the Lord wanted me to give up, I gave up pretty easy. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, for me, sexual temptation was just was just hard for me to give up because um, it wasn't just a sin that I enjoyed. It was a sin that I found my identity in and Christ was trying to shape my identity in him. Mm -hmm. And it was something that, you know, um, that I kept running back to and I kept falling into. And um, I think, you know, us talking about temptations, I, I think it's so connected to spiritual warfare because... Yeah. The enemy knows our vices. Yeah. And the enemy knows what we have found identity in apart from Christ. Yeah. And he's going to use that. Yeah. To throw at you. Because I think that's what temptation is. And that's, and that's when, you know, when we, when we fall um, into these temptations, it's, it's our sin mm -hmm. and the Satan and Satan working together for our own demise yeah. and our own destruction. And so, um, yeah, it was just, just fighting. Yeah, I remember one of my first, I guess the first time I was like really made aware of temptation. For one, one thing is, in one end, I was just, I was encouraged. So let me explain. So I was at work. I feel like I told this story a million times, but I was at work. I was at Wendy's. Yeah. And I was behind the cash register. And I feel like I said this in another podcast, but I was a bit of a thief. And so there hmm. were times when if you got a $20 bill, 
there was this box beneath the cash register that you put all your 20s into. And sometimes um, there was a way that you could give somebody back their change without actually having to put the money in the register. I can't explain what I mean, but you can basically undercut the register and take the extras. Mm -hmm. And so there was this circumstance. I was probably a believer. I'm not even lying. Maybe two days. Like I had just given my life to the Lord. Fresh. And there was an opportunity for me to take this money and nobody would know. I wouldn't get caught. And for the first time in my life, I hesitated. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't because I was afraid of getting caught. It wasn't because like of some other external reason, except to say I I was super aware that God was watching me. Mm. And it was like, oh, my, I'm not used to being convicted by the reality of God's omnipresence or that God has a law that he wants me to obey. It's like I'm not afraid of nobody else in this moment except God. And not even on some like he going to send me to hell, but on some like he wants better for me. Yeah. And I had never had that tension in yeah. my body ever to me which was evidence of the spirit's work in me yeah. that i was legitimately a new person because i'm over here debating on if i should steal or not because jesus is watching wow <laughs> so like i That's remember so i remember asking the lord i don't know how to pray at this i don't know scripture again i've been a, a christian for maybe 42 hours and i remember just saying god help me because that's yeah. all i knew and like now i know is that even without this scriptural context i was simply going to the throne of grace for help in my time of need and receiving it where i was able to just you know be yeah. content with the amount of money i already had that's so powerful because it's like the the temptation was still there and you often talk about this when you when you when you talk about sexuality and stuff like that but to, like being a christian doesn't like make us void of temptations but the difference was you had an awareness that god was watching Mm -hmm. because i had a i had a a mind that was being renewed Mm -hmm. i had a veil that had been lifted so i was able to see and understand things rightly i had a new fear of god that was giving me wisdom yeah the fear of god is the beginning of wisdom and i had the holy spirit who was giving me power yeah and so i think we always have way more on our side than we can imagine yeah and i think that's where christian discipleship in the local church and friendship and all the things comes uh becomes really pivotal because it's like we need fuel for our faith Mm -hmm. so that when the temptations do come we actually have the resources to fight i just noticed that i talked about my temptation when i first became a believer but i didn't really talk about how like I, i overcame it and i think it's important for me to point out how i overcame it because i think it's uh, critical for the for the Christian in in the, in the Christian walk to understand this and and that, and that is I remember sitting in my room one day and I remember um, yeah just being really convicted um, and and all like my conviction feeling like shame and so I didn't even have language for Christian conviction. And I did not know how to like like feel convicted and not condemn myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so I remember I told a story about how like, you know, I, I asked God to reveal to me whether or not I'm a Christian. And I saw a fight and I really felt sorry for the man. And God was like, that's because your heart is new. I said that on the podcast last season. Mm-hmm. But after that, um, what happened, I was in my room one day and I was praying and I was like, okay, God, you, you show me that I was a Christian. Now, how do I fight this thing? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And I believe like the Lord spoke to my heart at that moment and was like, you don't believe that I've saved you holistically. Mm. Like you believe when I saved you, I, I, I like saved you in portions all, almost. But you're not delivered in certain areas, not because I'm not the God who saved you. Right. I am that God. Mm-hmm. But you just don't believe me in this area in your mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. There's there's some unbelief. Mm-hmm in you still mm-hmm. about who I am mm-hmm. and what I can do in your life. Mm-hmm. And I think I think that's when we fall victim to our temptations the most. Mm-hmm. It's not merely because we want to do what we want to do. Mm-hmm. That is a factor. Mm-hmm. But it's also, no, we don't believe that God is God in this area, right? Mm-hmm. And so for me, it was like, because I love this particular scene so much, like I trusted in, 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 um, and my own desires and my, sometimes my own strength to fight this sin. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really lean to the Lord to say, you know what? You're powerful. You're, you're God enough mm. to take this temptation away from me, to help me to fight this, to strengthen me. And so I think that we just really have to believe God in all areas of our life. So basically what you're saying is faith 
helps you fight temptation. Absolutely. Okay. Faith is, is, is critical. And so, and so explain that more because I just wonder if I can see how, especially depending on what context you, what church context you grew up in, the way you have fought, you might have succeeded at apart from faith. Mm-hmm. Right. And so you you have some people who might lean on the fundamentalist side where the way they fight is by avoiding everything. Mm -hmm. So they avoid the movies. They yeah. avoid certain people. They avoid certain uh, contexts. And that's not to say it's not wise, because it is wise to actually guard your heart by watching where you go and watching what you engage. But you can do all that apart from faith. Hmm. Yeah, that's just a that's just a behavior. That's just a that's a, a that's a pattern you created. Absolutely. And so I guess what is the difference between someone who just has set up certain boundaries to keep them from sin and somebody who is actually walking by faith and that keeping them from sin? That's a really good question. I think one way I think for us to look at it is to understand how much how much of God is a relational God as it relates. Like he's a relational, like he's a father, right? And, and the reason why I say, say that is because because he's a father, we have to understand that, it, that our faith in him pleases him in a way that helps him to move on our behalf. Yes. Right? Without God, you, without faith, you cannot please God. Without faith, you cannot please God. And mm -hmm. so in the same way you want your, like, you're going to do for your children, but you're going to be compelled to, like, to, 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 to act on their behalf when you, when you know they believe in you, right? Mm -hmm. and, and know that they trust in, in you to, to take care of them. Mm -hmm. And so, like, when the disciples um, um, in the scriptures, the disciples uh, try to cast out a demon mm -hmm. right um and what jesus did uh jesus came and um saw that they couldn't cast out this evil spirit and jesus was immediately like bothered by it and they was like no we 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 we, we tried to cast out this this demon in your name um lord and 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 basically jesus rebuked them by not having enough faith yeah, right I call them and a he, faithless generation yeah he said you're a faithless generation and he said if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to that mountain, move, and it will move. Oh, we mixing stories. Never mind. Huh? We are mixing stories? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. He was rebuking him a lot. Yeah, yeah, he was, yeah, he was rebuking him a lot. But <laughs> the, point that I'm trying to, the point that I'm trying to make is uh, faith, faith pleases God in a way that allows him to move on our behalf. Mm. And some things you're not going to be able to just put in place, some measures. Cause, yeah, some boundaries that you can put in place is going to only get you so far. Mm -hmm. But some sin and some spiritual strongholds, and that's the reason why our temptation is, is so closely connected to spiritual warfare. There's, the Bible says we don't fight against flesh and blood, but mm -hmm. about, you know, we fight against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so we have to understand because we fight, we're fighting against the real enemy mm -hmm. that is powerful, yeah. right? But he's not more powerful than God. Yeah. We have to believe that God will, will, will give us the strength, give us his Holy Spirit, and give us the power to resist and, yeah. and flee sin and temptation. Yeah, while you were talking, I was thinking about how, you know, I think the Pharisees and the Sadducees are a really good example mm -hmm. of people who had a lot of external measures by which to um, be either perceived as holy or thinking that 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 was holy you know what i'm saying like they they over here straining gnats but missing like what is that camels or like they over here got tassels all like they doing the most like y'all y'all refuse to heal on the sabbath so as not to break the sabbath like just doing all of this external stuff and then Jesus is like, man, y'all are whitewashed tombs. Yeah. Meaning like none of this stuff is actually making you holy. It's yeah. the perception of holiness, mm. but it's not actually holiness because even when the Holy One comes on the scene, you don't even recognize him. And so that tells you something about your heart, that your heart is actually still hard, even though you look holy. <laughs> wow. So, I, so I, 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 I think one way to make sure that like because i think a modern example is you have people 
who really think they are more righteous than other people because they don't listen to secular music or because they don't celebrate Halloween or because they don't have tattoos or because they don't do these things, but their hearts, there's greed and there's jealousy and there's pride and there's unforgiveness. Mm. All the sins that we can't see. Bitterness and there's backbite. Like those are the sins that are not external, but they will be if you push against their idols hard enough. And so I guess like we cannot determine our holiness like by the things we do and do not do. Like it has to be, no, do you trust God though? If you trust God, then you will be putting to death what is earthly in you and what is outside of you. Does it make sense? Yeah. I feel like I'm not making any yeah, sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it makes a, a lot of sense. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. I, th I think because if we're not consistently coming to the Lord, one, to reveal those things, because mm -hmm. I think a lot of times self-righteousness takes place because we low-key are convinced that we're righteous because of all these external things and you know what it don't and take spiritual power not to get tattoos <sighs> it does take spiritual power though to not watch porn when you've been watching it for 12 years of Ab your life. absolutely it, it do take spiritual power to not cuss out somebody after they didn't disrespect you absolutely gonna, and, and that and that <laughs> and that's the reason not to not to go down the whole apologetics rant but i think <laughs> That's the main thing that we see with other religions. Mm -hmm. They follow a whole bunch of rules mm. and they think that these rules and these law keeping is what makes them holy. Mm. And in a lot of ways, a lot of Christians live like cults, but we just, we just have Jesus Christ as a, as, as a, as a banter, right? Because the, the Muslims, they, they believe that they're righteous by not doing, not doing, not doing. And God forbid that you say you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you believe that you're holy because of what you do, what you don't do instead of what God has done in, in you. Let me read a text yeah. to affirm what you're saying. Yeah. You ready? Colossians 2. Uh, let me see. If with Christ you died to the elemental spirits of the world, why, as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to regulations? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, referring to things that all perish as they are used according to human precepts and teaching. Mm. They indeed have an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and asceticism and severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. Oof. Then what does he say in verse three? If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, like, like the, the faith that God is called us to and fighting our temptations requires us to seek jesus yeah and so if you do set up boundaries if you do have these like it is good to say i'm not finna go over this person's house it is good to say i'm not gonna watch this i'm not gonna listen to this but let it be done from faith because everything not done from faith is still sin yeah, absolutely so that's good that's now, really good with that what is it about jesus that one needs to be clinging to in fighting their temptations. Say it again, what that one needs to be clean. What is it about Jesus that someone needs to believe mm -hmm. that helps them fight temptations? Absolutely. I think that, well, it's a lot. Yeah, everything. <laughs> Every, everything. But we, we have to believe that Jesus came and defeated these things for us. Mm. Like, if we don't believe that Jesus condescended and became a man to live on this earth as a man and started his earthly ministry at 30 and died when he was 33, the most gruesome and one of the most shameful deaths of his time and was put in the grave and defeated death in the grave and then rose from the grave yeah, with yeah. all power in his right hand uh -huh. and then ascended back to the father to sit, to, to, to sit on the right hand of the father but before he did that he promised that to send his holy spirit to dwell in the hearts of believers empowering them to walk freely uh -huh. in him right like if we don't believe that jesus did this work on our behalf we're going to continue to work on our own to try to be right but if we believe that Jesus did all of these things uh -huh. so that we can be free, uh -huh. I think that's when we'll be able to walk in, 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 in you know, in, in freedom. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I, I, I want us to truly believe the word of God, that the word says that now, now, now we are in Christ Ooh, and we're, got, we're hidden in him. I got a word. Uh, and, and so, like, I, I think that we have to believe that Jesus defeated death on our behalf. And, and if we're in him, he will empower us to defeat death in our own life. This is, this is, this is why 
are where spiritual warfare comes in. Mm -hmm. Because if faith in Christ's nature and Christ's work is what helps us to walk free from sin, then we have to know that one of the premier or preeminent attacks that the devil will attack us with is about those two categories, mm -hmm. which you see in Genesis three. Yes. When he comes, he doesn't just attack, you know, like, it's not like he on some, like, he doesn't attack her like with stupid stuff. He attacks her with what she understands about, about God. God himself. Yes. You know what I'm yep. saying? Like for her, to, for him to say, did God really say that you shall not sure, surely die if you eat of fruit? And then he says, but you won't die. Like he's calling God a liar. Yeah. He's calling God unjust. Mm -hmm. And then the original question kind of had to deal with like, if God is telling you that you shouldn't have this, he's holding something back. Mm. So now he's also coming for God's good goodness and god's character, character. Yeah. and so it's like so much of our warfare really is us believing that god is who he says that he is yes and, and how that influences us and believing that god um, and, and believing what god said that he did on our behalf because yeah. a lot of times we can acknowledge that god did something but we don't it, it doesn't compute to us that he did it for me yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we can believe that God died on the cross. But it's like, no, do you believe that God died for you? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that the God that's seated on the throne is empowering you and will empower you to to, to defeat sin in your own life? Mm -hmm. Right? Are you, are you? Is your faith in that? Are you trusting in that? Yeah. And if so, you might be, you might be being lied to by the enemy. Yep. And the thing that I, I hate about the enemy the most is that he is the ultimate bully and he's the ultimate manipulator, which means... That the, the the devil will will feed you your idols, right? And then once he feeds you your idols, he'll 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 shame you for eating them. <laughs> he'll he'll say he'll Full belly. yeah he'll he'll say he'll say no no take this pride this pride is gonna make you feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. This pride is gonna make you feel safe. This pride is gonna make you feel you know it's gonna protect you. And then once and then once you you know you eat it once you once you eat the idol he'll say. You're not a you're not a good person. You're not a good friend. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah, and so yeah. like he 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 manipulates you and then he bullies you, mm, bullies you. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, he came to set us free, yeah. not not from just death, but from the lies of the enemy that's mm -hmm. trying to keep us away from God. And so I think that we just have to know what God has done on our behalf, and mm -hmm. we have to know that the devil has been a liar from the beginning. I'm gonna say one thing, and then I'm gonna ask a question. Yeah. And the one thing is, I think to 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 wrap this whole last 10 minutes up is I think to, to, to recognize that's why in Ephesians six, the, in the armor of the spirit or the, yeah, the armor of the spirit, like one of the defenses is the shield of faith. Yes. Like to, to, to have a shield means like I'm covering my body, mm -hmm. but not my legs, not my head. Cause that's what a helmet is for. And leg, there's a different set of armor, but shield is, is covering my torso and my heart. The really, mm -hmm. the, the really sensitive parts that if someone puts an arrow through that, I'm dead. And mm -hmm. so it's like to have the shield of faith. The Bible says that that is by which we extinguish the flaming darts of the evil one. Yeah. And so it's like, if he's going to come for anything, it's going to be what you believe, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so I think with that, I wanted to say, now, how do we discern when what we are feeling, what we are hearing about God and even ourselves is coming from a demonic place? Because it, 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 it sounds like we're talking to ourselves. Yeah, right? ab absolutely. Absolutely. I think that we have to understand the shield of faith is not going to really work well if we don't have the helmet of salvation. Mm. Right. Because the head, the, the mind and the heart. All is always the mind is always going to inform the heart. And so if we believe if we don't believe something about God, it's always going to affect our heart and how we move in and, in and out in and in our life. And so I think that we have to consistently pray and ask God, God, reveal to me who you are and how that impacts my life. Mm -hmm. Allow that your word to transform my mind. Right. Um, the Bible talks about being renewed by the transforming of our mind. It doesn't say heart, our mind. Because mm -hmm. if our mind is convinced, it's going to affect our heart. So how do we discern the voice of the evil one? Then? Yeah, and so I think the way we discern the voice of the evil one is consistently reminding ourselves about what God has said about us in his word. Give me an example. 
All right. So I think an example is reminding ourselves that God says that we are we are we are made new in Him. Mm-hmm. Reminding ourselves that God said we are righteous mm-hmm. in Him. That reminding ourselves that if it, it when God says that. He is holy and in him we are holy, Mm -hmm. reminding ourselves that we're not how we used to be, Mm -hmm. right? That he has made us new new creatures in him, reminding ourselves that we are new, Mm -hmm. right? And even when we fall, the Bible says that we have a throne of grace to come to with boldness that we might find mercy and our help in our time of need. Mm -hmm. And so not allowing the devil to convince you that you are a sinner uh, and that you are worthless when you sin, but because even when you sin, God says, you know what? Because you are in me, you have access to this throne at all times mm-hmm. and you can find grace and mercy in your, in, in your time of need. Mm-hmm. And so reminding ourselves and not not what we've done and not what we do on an everyday basis, but who we are in. That's good. We are in Jesus. That's right. Good. And he's holy. And I'm not made holy by my own doing, by my own works, by my own righteousness, mm-hmm. but I'm made holy by him. Mm-hmm. And so I think continuously to look in him and him for for our righteousness and our holiness is going to help us fight against the enemy because the enemy wants you to think that every time you fall, that every time you slip, you are your failure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That every time you do something, you are that 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 bad person. But mm-hmm. it's like, no. You made a bad decision or you got an attitude or you're this and you're that, but you are not the sin. You are who Christ says you are. Yeah, you're a new creature. You're a new creature. And yeah. so just reminding yourself that if you're new. You are. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll add a really uh, a personal example, which is probably a couple weeks ago. Well, maybe the last few months, I've been having a lot of shame. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm a really overly... Well, I'm just really a confident person. Like, I just kind of, you know, I just be feeling like, oh, I could do that. (laughs) And I don't I don't have a problem. And so I never thought that shame would be something that describes me Mm -hmm. because I I thought shame was for insecure people. Yeah. Um, Until recently, I started to deal with this shame because I started to be aware of the way I fail people, whether that's in my friendships, whether that's you, whether that's with my children. And I started to meditate on my failures a lot to the point that I started to be content with the content with the idea that I was trash. Mm-hmm. Like it was like, and I would say that to myself, like you're trash, you're yeah. worthless. And I really didn't think it was a big deal. Yeah, I just yeah, was yeah. like, Oh, you're trash and you're worthless. And to a certain degree, I thought that that was a, that was actually a good way to fight pride. Yeah. And so it would be like, if I did feel super haughty it would be like yeah but remember when you failed last week you're actually trash it's like yeah you're right i am trash i am worthless i am this until i realized how much that shame was actually opening the door for other sin and discouragement and even a lack of not a lack of fruitfulness because i've still been fruitful but even just kind of like a like a not being able to receive and experience God's love and God's joy Mm -hmm. because of the shame. Yeah. And I realized like, I felt like the Lord was like showed me and us like that's demonic Jackie. Yeah. And it was like, you right. Cause it's like where in God's word would he ever say those things about you? No, where, never. Where would he ever say you're trash? Yeah. Where would he ever say you're worthless? Only a devil would tell you that. Yeah. And so like, I had to be like, oh, wow. Even shame is demonic. a spiritual demonic attack on God's people. But hear this too. That's so good. It's like, so I think one of the practices of discerning the voice of the evil one is actually practicing the art of, of believing and disciplining your mind to only think on what is true. Mm -hmm. Like in Philippians, like think on these things, whatever is righteous, whatever is pure, even concerning ourselves. You are a new creature in Christ. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. To him who was able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. To him who was able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless and blameless for his glorious presence with great. Like these things are Mm. true. And so often we meditate on untruths all day and don't understand how that keeps us in a cycle of like slavery or oppression to things that are untrue. So here's the word that came to my mind. I just remembered it is that like the Lord was showing me that the same energy and faith 
I put into fighting sexual sin. Mm-hmm. Like I've 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 created a whole like that's a muscle I have consistently worked. Mm-hmm. Like to make sure that I honor you and honor God in my mind and my heart when it comes to sexual sin. I don't even play with it. Yeah. It's just like a thought like, nah, I'm casting that down. Like uh uh or like anything. It's just I resist it with with all with all zeal. Yeah. But I, I felt like the Lord was like the same energy you put into fighting that is the same energy you need to put into fighting shame. But here's the 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 deceptive part is that sometimes the the enemy makes us feel like sexual sin is more demonic than things like shame. Mm. You know, or or bitterness or mm-hmm. jealousy. And so we entertain those ideas because they don't feel as illicit. Mm-hmm. They don't feel as dark. Yeah. But those things don't exist in heaven. Yeah. But where do they exist? Yeah, hell. Right? <laughs> so, like that. That's With the not, enemy. That's the the spirit doesn't produce those things. Yeah, and so if the spirit doesn't produce it, we can't walk in it. Yeah, that's yeah. what I wanted to say. It yeah. came back to me. Thank yeah. you, Father. That's good. That's real good. So, man, yeah, uh, I, that's one thing I had to learn. I had to learn that that what I think about God will inform what I think about myself. Let's talk about prayer. Oh. What, what's what's the place of prayer? In fighting temptation and spiritual warfare, man, prayer is so important um, because I, I I think ultimately we talk about spiritual warfare, right? And I think this is what I'm learning. The more and more I've I've I've, I've been in prayer a lot lately, um, and what I'm learning is I think when we think about spiritual warfare, we think about, I'm getting hot. you know, calling down heaven and calling down fiery darts and, mm-hmm. and, and going through, you know, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, like, like, like asking God to start a war with the enemy and all of that, all that is cool. Mm-hmm. But I think prayer allows us to be in close proximity with God. And because we fight against spiritual wickedness in hot places, we have to understand that the enemy is the ultimate bully Mm -hmm. and he's the ultimate manipulator, Mm -hmm. right? But he cannot manipulate you when you are in close proximity with the God of the universe. Prayer, that's what prayer does. Mm -hmm. It keeps you close. Like in Psalms, it talks about hiding us under the shadow of the Almighty from the enemy, right? And so that's what prayer does. It it, it invites God into into your life, Mm -hmm. and it ushers you into the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And it's not that we don't have an enemy no more. It's that, you know, the school bully cannot bully you. Mm -hmm. When you when you, when you're with the God of the universe, mm-hmm. right? And so I think prayer is so important because it helps us to fight. It mm-hmm. gives us strength um, because it, it it allows us to have a relationship with the one who controls it all. Um, and so I think that's what prayer has been for me lately. It's been a, a way. Um, uh, it's a song by um, I think Maverick City called Defender. Bethel. Bethel, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, uh, uh, called Defender. And uh, it's, it's, it's basically talking about fighting. And uh, in the, one of the lines, it said, um, um, all I did was worship mm-hmm. and all I did was praise, you know, and that's how I, how I fought. And I think in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's, that's true. I think these, this intimacy with God, um, and I think it's, it's initiated with just talking with him because that's how intimacy is initiated. Yeah. Conversation um, brings us in close proximity in a way that God is, is, is with us and protects us. Yeah. I'm going to read the scripture and then I, I, I have a, an idea, which is just to affirm again, like this, like even prayer is a part of the armor of God, because after Paul talks about taking the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word. He says, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. And, you know, there's arguments made that praying in the spirit means to pray in tongues. Uh, but usually when Paul is saying praying in the spirit, he's basically saying like, cause he, he says that in Jude as well, mm-hmm. it's praying as the spirit would pray. Yeah. And so being alert, praying the scriptures, praying what is true, interceding for other people, because even the spirit is not self-serving. He's humble and he's considerate of others. Mm-hmm. And so even how you you pr- like praying as the spirit would lead you to pray. Now, with that said, prayer 
is an act of warfare because prayer is a function of dependence. Mm. And you cannot fight when you fight independently, right? Like it's like we don't ha- we don't have the strength or the tools or even the morality to be able to fight an ancient demon and win. Like we we need a power outside of ourselves, which is God. Like yeah. we, like in our weakness, we we are made strong. And so I think that's why prayer has to be an emphasis in all spiritual warfare and prayer with the saints, with which Ephesians says too, is because we 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 have to lean into God so that we got the humility needed to fight the yeah. war. With that though, you told this story before. I don't I don't think we've told it on the podcast in a while, which is a long time ago, you had a dream about our family. And in the dream, there was this figure who was trying to get into our house. Yeah. I, I think this story is fitting for this moment. Yeah, I, I had a I had a, a, a dream that uh, an evil spirit was trying to like find its way into our home. Um, and um, the, the moment I began to um, try to like rebuke it by telling it, it, to, it to get away, um, it just it just ignored me as if like you know um, it didn't see me it didn't hear me um, but the moment I sat down and just rested on this in this chair uh, I felt like the Lord was saying this is how you fight mm. you fight the enemy by resting in me right and um and then it began to like go away and the in the in the in the dream begin to fade and I think to 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 add to your point about prayer um like like praying in the spirit, it's been times where I have felt the closest to the Lord, especially lately, because mm-hmm. you know what I've been going through lately. Right. And I've just been in prayer and I'm praying. And because I feel closer to the Lord, I feel like the Lord is like literally guiding me to pray for things that I didn't even think about. Mm-hmm. And so because we fight against spiritual wickedness, because we fight against things that we cannot see, Mm -hmm. a spiritual realm that we cannot see, we have to understand that we have to look to God to even teach us what to pray for. Yikes. We have to look here. We have we have we have to we have it has to be this dependency on God to say, God, I'm so helpless Mm -hmm. and which is humility has to come Mm -hmm. come into play i'm so helpless i'm a i'm a i'm a created being i i can't see the spiritual realm Mm -hmm. i can't see you know things ain't going in and out my room you know i can't see these things but you know you you see the things that's trying to fight my children in their sleep you see the things that's trying to fight me in my mind when when i when i when i'm at work you see like all of these things and so i think that the like depending on the, the the lord in prayer he will teach you and show you what to pray for even when you don't even know what to pray for amen man yeah i i i agree <laughs> with with everything uh i've been reading uh ephesians a, a few times through through in the last few weeks and I don't know all the things because Ephesians is a really deep book. (laughs) But I think one thing that has been encouraging me is that you saw me in the bed where I started. I kept seeing the word or the the phrase in the in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. And she was stuck on that in heavenly places. But it was in heavenly places. It was because (laughs) repetition in scripture means something. Like if, if something is being repeated, this is a theme that the spirit is inspiring in the writer to, to, uh, to highlight Thanks. and so it kept saying in heavenly places in heavenly places and i was like bro like i've only like I, like chapter one blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us in christ with every spiritual spiritual blessing in the heavenly places uh chapter one verse uh 20 uh jesus he worked in christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of god in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority verse 5 chapter 2 even when we were dead in our trespasses he made us alive together with christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up with him seated with him in the heavenly places chapter 3 uh jesus came and did all the things that so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. For this reason, I bow my knee before the father from whom every family is. Oh, that's not it. So like it's this constant theme of in the heavenly places. And sometimes we only consider that the place where warfare is happening. Mm. But in the first two chapters, it says that we're seated in the heavenly places where Jesus has defeated all all of the rulers and powers and authorities that exist there. Wow. And so in the same place where there is 
warfare, there has been victory. Yeah. And so I said all of that to say, it's like, you better man, preach. Like we are like Elijah, where it's like his servant comes out and sees these people from the king of Syria coming out and he gets scared. And Elijah says, Lord, Lord like open up his eyes so that he might see. And what he ends up seeing is angels and horses and flames of fire surrounding him. And he says like, there is more with us than with them. And that's the reality of every Christian that's is good. that we have more power than we could ever imagine. Yes. So that's good news. I think we can end it there. You just preached the whole word. That, that was, was good. Word. Now we got to gird up our, our spirits for all the attacks because we probably going to have an argument tonight. So we usually, we, <laughs> we, 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 we usually. Um, <laughs> we have an argument in 10 minutes because of the spirits of the principalities. <laughs> we usually end by saying peace or by saints and names, but I feel led to just pray for everybody who's listening to this podcast look, looking at this youtube video to pray for you um and i'll we'll invite you guys to pray for us because i want us to know that we don't fight against flesh and blood uh, we have a real enemy that wants you to be away from the presence of god and so let me just pray for us and pray for you and so lord i thank you god for this podcast i thank you god for your truth i thank you god that this is not just a podcast for us to tell jokes but god to display your truth and to display your love and so god i pray god that you will strengthen us that you will strengthen your body um to fight um not just their sin but the enemy who works together with that sin for their own destruction and for our own destruction god i pray god that you will give us the the faith in you to turn to you when it's the hardest. I pray, God, that you would strengthen us, God, in these last days to, to proclaim your truth and to walk in your love and to walk in your goodness. God, I pray, God, that we will fight for your joy, hmm. that we will fight for your joy, Lord, um, when it's hard. God, I pray, God, that we will fight for your peace. God, I pray, God, that we will not just read your word, but we will believe it. Hmm. Um, the enemy is not afraid of the Bible. He's afraid of Christians who believe in it. And so God, I pray God that you would give us the power to, to believe what we read and to live it out. Um, so the world can see God, I pray against everybody in this, uh, for everybody in this podcast, who's experiencing spiritual warfare. I pray God that you will be with them. God, you are a comforter. God it says in Hebrews that, that we have a throne of grace to come to with boldness that we f might find mercy and help in our time of need. And so God, I pray when they fall, they won't turn to condemnation, but they will turn to your throne. God, where they can come to freely and ask for your help um, because you are the one who passed through the heavens and you are a great high priest. And so, God, I pray, God, that we will trust in you more than our own um, um, vices, more than our own sin and more than the voices in our head that's trying to make us not believe in you. We love you. We thank you. And we believe you for everything we've asked in Jesus name. Amen. Shando, we should it make it shake. Peace. 30 Minutes with the Perrys is a production of Ivy Media Podcast. Edited by Angie Elkins. Video recording and audio production by Kim Powell. Artwork by Hop and music by Swoop. Join us on Patreon for early access to With the Perrys episodes and other exclusives. You got two options. You can go to www.patreon.com forward slash with the Perrys or just go ahead and scroll. You'll find the link in our show notes. We are the Perrys. Thank y'all for listening. Now go with God. <laughs>